Now, meanwhile, U.S. President Joe Biden will speak with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu over the phone. Now, this comes three days after Israel launched an attack in which seven World Central Kitchen aid workers were killed in Gaza. Well, the aid workers were killed within their convoy that was being hit after shortly they oversaw the unloading of 100 tons of food brought to Gaza by sea. The White House has described Biden as outraged and heartbroken by the attack. However, the president has made no fundamental change in the United States' steadfast support for its Israel, in fact, for Israel in its conflict in Gaza. And so we are going to continue to mourn uh, with them, with them, with, the, with Chef Jose Andres and obviously the families. Uh, I'm just not going to, he's going to speak for himself. Uh, we are very clear about where we stand. I think the president's a statement was incredibly powerful, impactful, uh, and really truly lays out where how he feels about the current situation. A U.S. official said Biden was likely to bring up the need for better protections for humanitarian workers for an increased food shipments into Gaza. Celebrity chef and World Central Kitchen founder Jose Andres said that the food aid operations have been halted for now. Uh, we need to go every day uh, until, uh, until we assess what really is the situation uh, and how we can obviously uh, try to keep uh, going on operations. But at this point, uh, the situation is halted. But again, we are trying to go hour by hour uh, analyzing the situation on how to keep doing the work uh, we do. The World War Center Kitchen does. Uh, in places like Ukraine, obviously now in places like Gaza, in places like Lebanon, in places like Armenia. Um, but uh, most and foremost, uh, we need to feel, all of us, we need to feel uh, uh, safe. Now, concerned about the slow pace of aid deliveries on land, the United States has been carrying out airdrops and building a temporary pier for shipments from the sea. The U.S. and Israeli representatives had earlier met virtually to discuss Israel's threat to launch a broad offensive in the southern Gaza city of Rafah, where many Palestinians have fled to escape fighting elsewhere. The U.S. and Israel plan further discussions at an in-person meeting of representatives next week. The White House National Security Spokesperson John Kirby said that while the in-person meeting was unlikely to reach firm conclusions, Washington hoped to make progress on how to root out Hamas militants from Rafah without harming, harming civilians. Nobody is working harder than Joe Biden or this administration on trying to get a ceasefire in place so that we can get the hostages out. So I, I just... I guess I'm just going to take issue with, the, again, the, the premise of the question. We have been exceedingly consistent and clear with our expectations for the prosecution of these operations. And for more on this, our correspondent Susan Tehrani has sent us this report from New York. Listen to her. The upcoming phone call between President Joe Biden and Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu will come after President Biden criticized Israel for not protecting aid workers in Gaza. The discussion may address the planned military operation in Rafah and the humanitarian crisis in Gaza. Here at home, President Biden met with a small group of Muslims at the White House, but the meeting was marked by tension. One attendee, Dr. Thayer Ahmad, walked out of the meeting in protest, citing his support for Palestinians and his belief that the White House needs to do more as progressives took a victory lap when tens of thousands of primary voters in Connecticut, Rhode Island and Wisconsin voted uncommitted on Tuesday over the president's policies regarding the war in Gaza. Susan Tehrani reporting from New York for We On World is One. For all the latest news, download the We On app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.